if you, it used to be if you got HIV, that they were just like, well, figure out the rest of your life, <laughs> you know, because you're probably going to die in five years. Nowadays, if you get HIV, if you get on treatment, it's like you live for the rest of your life, just kind of as though it's easier to look after than diabetes nowadays. Because diabetes, you have to check a couple times a day. Whereas with HIV meds, you just have to take them once a day and go to the doctor every couple months. Like that's all it is now. And treatment is so good that it's even harm reduction to be on treatment because if you get to that undetectable viral load, you can't even spread it to other people, which is absolutely amazing. Wow. So somebody who like doesn't even make any other choices, they're just like, I'm gonna be on meds. And that's sometimes what harm reduction is about, is doing everything you can to provide that safety for somebody to make those choices, even if it's only one of them, right? So if you have some, like say for example, if you're somebody who has to do transactional sex, right? You're having sex so that you have a place to live, so you, so you can get food or whatever else, it's survival sex. It's awful tough to be like, always wear a condom, when you're like, yeah, if I don't get paid tonight, I don't eat tonight, right? So you're not thinking as much about some of the condoms. But if you can help that person get tested regularly, and if they get an HIV, if they get HIV or another STI, they either get a cure to get on treatment, then it means yeah. that they can continue on doing what they need to do to survive. For me, harm reduction is, is one of those topics that I've actually gone on a huge journey with. I think really early on growing up in Alberta, the idea of harm reduction to me was all about drug users and everything else. And that was the focus of it. And, and as time has gone on and I've worked with people that are living regular everyday lives and somehow sometimes have to make choices that make their life tough, I've, I've really kind of come to sort of understand that harm reduction is all about helping people make safer choices while they're pursuing their idea of health, whether that's physical things like needles or condoms or sometimes even stuff like supports that when they're going through really hard struggles that just allow them to survive until the next day and they can finally get to that spot where they're feeling good. And, and so harm reduction is, is more than just drugs. It's about helping people make like healthier, safer choices while they pursue what they're looking for for health. Again, harm reduction is mostly for me, um, well, I guess taking care of your own actions as to not harm other people or put other people in danger, and also to keep yourself out of dangerous situations and to be aware of dangerous situations. Yeah. Harm reduction means to me just being safe, um, not having unprotected sex, um, using clean uh, needles if like I was injecting or using, like just being safe when it comes to using drugs in general. I've had a few bad experiences being here, so it's not like, um, I know from firsthand experience how bad it can be if harm reduction isn't used. Uh, harm reduction to me, I would say like, just trying not to like put yourself in situations that put your, like you as your physical self in danger or other people in danger, but you're also trying to survive at the same time. Anything that you can do to make uh, whatever activity or whatever healthier or safer, um, whether that's safe sex or um, if you choose to do drugs, then how to do that safely. With the whole drug thing, uh, personally I don't use drugs, but when I start my hormone therapy, like testosterone, um, I'm gonna have to like inject it, so like I can't be using dirty needles. I have to like get clean ones. And like, uh, he also said like self-harm, and I have self-harmed before, and like I had to like always just get like clean razor blades and other products. And like, I started kind of just snapping a, an elastic band on my wrist, but it broke, sadly, <laughs> and um, it was actually just really interesting of how much like just one singular dirty needle can just fuck up your whole life. I learned, I guess that a lot of the risks that I think I was putting myself into isn't really as bad because sometimes um, when you're homeless you kind of have to share a lot of the things you have. Well, for, I, I, for me, and I haven't seen many other people, but for me, I get really stressed out to the point where I overthink a lot. Um, my mind won't start stop racing, which makes it difficult to fall asleep at night. Um, and it was just it's just a bunch of bad thoughts, you know. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't I don't want this. I don't want that. Just from all the stress, 
And that, that doesn't necessarily have to do with homelessness. It's just, you know, battles in my own life that stay behind closed doors that I don't tell people because I don't feel like the world should have to deal with my problems. I'm more of a person that I should deal with my own. So. Addiction is the biggest one out here. You, you don't get enough sleep at the shelters. They give you like, you gotta, you gotta wake up at seven, and they expect you to go to bed by 12. And it, that's like one of the major things for me is like, I can't wait to get my own place and housing so I could get like full 10 hours sleeps. And there's a lot of like fighting that goes around. And, like people steal and then people get in fights or somebody does something. So I've only been here two weeks and I've seen like there's been a lot of fights. So a lot of people don't really respect each other, but the people who do treat each other right. Personally, I kind of just got beat up. That's why the fancy uh, splint is on my finger uh, for being trans. They didn't accept the fact that I was wanting to transition and they're like, well, you'll look funny because like you were a lot prettier as a female and like me and you had sex and he beat me up. So yeah, it sucks. I'm not living in a world that's fully accepting yet. Making sure that the people around me are like safe people to be around aren't like negative and making sure that like you eat healthy I guess and like watching out for yourself not putting yourself in dangerous environments and just being really self-aware. I stay around more intelligent and aspirational people and then if I am getting into risky behavior, I, I'm always with the group and I assess the risks before. Mm, keeping myself happy and like a positive attitude and positive mindset and the, like what you want to do further in the future instead of just like focusing on right now. I take care of my body and I'm always watching what I'm eating and I'm always like making sure I get like the tests from the ladies. So I'm always like making sure I'm safe and then like I always make sure I'm around the right environment. Because if you're not in the right environment, you run into a lot of problems. Well, our needle exchange is the main one, which we just got last year, I do believe. And it depends on the worker and the relationship you have. They're safe enough to come to us and ask us for those needles, knowing that we're not judging them. And then I get that little two seconds of asking them, when do you want to change? Or have that thing and just uh, like the other day, uh, came, we got 10 needles. And I was like, you need 10 needles? Yeah, okay, you're gonna be okay. Yeah, you got a safe place tonight. She's like, yeah, and I was like, all right. And you're still thinking about not doing it because you told me about it last week, you're trying to quit? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I'm going through some rough times right now. Shaz, we'll talk later. It's like, okay, just be safe tonight, please. Yeah, no problem. She came back the next day and we talked. And like, it was pretty cool. Yeah, was just being there for them. Just, yeah. I used to give people like clean rigs and like carry that stuff in my bag because like you'd see people on the street sometimes and they'd be like, does anyone have like a dirty rig I could use? And I'm like, Dude, man, here you go. <laughs> Fucking don't do that, please, for the love of God. Um, my friend, he actually got hep C because his friend gave him a dirty rig and he did not know. Um, so yeah, definitely that. I know there's a lot of health concerns surrounding that. Again, if it's your own, even that's dangerous, but if it's somebody else, that's just, I feel like it's too obvious to even say, but just the contamination, the spreading, it's directly going to your veins. That's contamination of the blood. You could get an infection in your bloodstream, which could le be lethal. And also uh, jamming of a rig happens often. If you're reusing an old one, if you've got dried blood in the tip of the needle, it makes the plunger stop working. And what I've seen with that is when people try to force the needle to work, they're pushing on it so hard that they're actually jamming their own veins, which is very dangerous. Again, with like the infections and like diseases, and then like you want to like make sure you dispose of them properly, so people who don't 
do that kind of stuff aren't like exposed to it or like it could even be like triggering to some people who are like trying to get clean well to avoid blood infections um you know to avoid if you do have a blood infection yourself to avoid giving someone else a blood infection you know just to avoid passing things back and forth to other people you know if you have something why should the next person in line get it because you didn't make the choice to make sure it was clean I think you can get an STI from using dirty rigs and if they have like a blood infection and if there's blood in that rig and you just like squeeze whatever you're shooting up and just insert it in your arm like you could have just a like a major blood infection and you could possibly die. I've had friends that have died before with dirty rigs, sometimes clean rigs because they were allergic to the metal. It's hard being homeless and trying to find clean rigs or have a place to actually go to have sex. Uh, to avoid life-threatening diseases, um, STDs, things that could really, really mess up your life, um, such as HIV, like that. From what I know, I believe it does kill people. Um, it's, I believe it's also incurable. Um, that's something that sticks with you for life. Numerous reasons, diseases, infections, kids being the number one. Um, not getting HIV, not catching whatever like venereal disease there is out there. Um, it's it's even if you're monogamous or like faithful in a relationship, you don't always know if your partner is. It's, and it's like it's not healthy to not get checked. Like if you if your partner's sleeping around on you or whatever, you could catch something that they have and then you wouldn't even know it if they didn't, like, let you know, you know? So you don't catch diseases or infections? I think if you don't have access to harm reduction supplies, then you don't have access to uh, growth and change and healthier community. Often when I'm talking with people in the community about why it's important to have um, harm reduction supplies and safe, safe injection sites is because it's not just about providing them with the ability to do those drugs, but it's also saying when you show up for these things, you're also getting access to people who are going to talk to you about what alternatives will look like. And even if you come back 20 times, and on the 20th time you say, hey, I'm kind of ready for a change, that's why it has to be there that whole time, so that we're always ready for when they're ready. Sometimes it can be the people around you, your friends or something, like, if they're into, like, drugs or anything, like, they, they could try and pressure it on you, or being, like, the area you're in, and like the vibes you can get, they can, it can really affect you and like it can make you do it. Uh, sometimes it's hard to like let people know what your demons are, right? And open up to people and let them know certain things about you or like people, like as soon as somebody finds out that somebody's injected drugs or something, they see them completely different and they call them junkies and whatever else. But to be honest with you, I've met more honest junkies on the street sometimes than I've met like like regular straight people at home, you know? When other people who are accessing the resources decide that they're gonna snap and destroy part of the resources, that's the biggest problem I've had. The times where I really desperately needed the food or the warmth or shelter in here has always been closed because some kid is ticked off that they can't get their locker opened up fast enough or they don't have enough food. And it's not that they're not being fed, it's they don't want to eat lunch and they're trying to break into the pantry to steal the food from there. They ruin it for everyone who actually needs the services. A lot of times for me, it's transportation like not all not every day I have bus tickets to get around not every day being exhausted all the time like being on the streets is pretty exhausting uh, 
I like everything. Like they, they have all resources and like they got the right people who work here and like that's what I like is they have the right people here who can help and show you things. Um, I like it when they provide condoms to other youth. I don't dislike it at all. I don't mind it. I think it's something good that they're doing. People trying to help people feel better about themselves and not want to hurt themselves. I don't think Yes has any problems. I think that they're like, they're not organized enough, but they're still very organized. Like, uh, like their donations. That's where I got a lot of my clothes. Because I, when I came here, I had nothing. And, um, I do really like Yes. I like the workers. Everybody's so positive here. Like, they they just keep like a, like an upbeat, like, uh, place for everybody. Everywhere needs to have sharps containers. Everywhere. Like, bathrooms even, because like, in Edmonton, there's like a public bathroom here, like just outside, or kind of in a building. And I went in there the one day, and like, I looked in the stalls being all curious and shit, and like, there's needles on the floor, and there's no sharps containers. We need to like invest in sharps containers and like bathrooms and like ladies' bathrooms and like unisex bathrooms and stores and West Ed and even like buses, buses, transit stations, like just everywhere. If you are going to be using needles, be sure that you know how to use them properly. It's always safer to be informed and to ask instead of assuming that you know and making mistakes. Um, as for sex, again, if you're going to be changing partners, do get tested. And I know it's not always the easiest, but ask around, keep a condom on you. It will help and you won't regret it. Don't waste your beautiful skin on scars. I've already did that and I love my scars to bits and pieces. I don't know why, but I also have a tattoo covering a lot of them. There's always like help out there somewhere. You just gotta go out and like look for it and utilize it. Take care of yourself. And if you do, like when you do what you wanna do with your life, just kinda make sure that like you get STI checked, uh, your blood checked, like a possible physical exam if it like you're like, really bad their your health is really bad and just yeah just take care of yourself talk to the resources that doesn't necessarily mean the staff here it could be it could be that meth head friend of yours that has been doing it for 12 years he knows what he's doing talk to him learn how to do it safely and properly if you're going to get into it just be safe just think Think, like, think a lot before you do anything. Like, question yourself, question other people. Um, ask yourself if you think, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't seem right, then don't do it. Just, just be smart. I don't know, stay focused on what you have in mind, your goals, your aspirations. Um, and just be careful, listen.